Hey everybody, we are going to do something a little different today. We are going to make a gift slash treat box. This one is designed to hold uh, pretzel sticks. Um, you know, when people make those pretzels and they have like the chocolate and the sprinkles and all of the goodness on top, this box is designed to hold those. So I went to Walmart, found those pretzel rods. I already had almond bark in my pantry and I purchased some sprinkles and we are going to make these boxes for, I'm making them for teacher gifts for Thanksgiving, but you can use them for whatever. Um, this project is heavily inspired by um, Angie with Stamping with Amore. She is a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the US and she has a channel here on YouTube called Stampin' with Amore. And this is heavily inspired by her. She used plain cardstock and did like designer series panels. I didn't have plain cardstock that was colored. All of mine was white. And I really wanted to use something that was more fall themed. So plus I have a lot of my kids' teachers are males. And so I wanted to make something that wasn't quite so uh, girly. And I wanted it to be for Thanksgiving. So this is, I'm using a paper pad that I got from Wal uh, not Walmart, Hobby Lobby. In fact, it is this one right here, and I believe they still sell this. I purchased this pad recently, so um, as of November of 2022, this is still available, and it's called Sunflower by the Paper Studio. So that is the paper pad I'm using today. Let's go ahead and dive in. Um, this is the first time I've ever done anything like this on my YouTube channel, so we will learn together, folks. <laughs> so here we go. Uh, the first thing that you need is paper for your lid and paper for your box. So your box measures nine and a half by 10. Your lid measures four and three eighths by four and three eighths. Um, the beauty about using uh, papers from a paper pad is they're designed to all coordinate together. So if you struggle with putting patterns and colors and all of that together, find a paper pad that you like and you're good to go. Like you don't have to worry about things coordinating. Does this clash? Does this look too busy? Blah, blah, blah. You're fine. Like just find a paper pad that you like the patterns and go with it. So first things first, we're going to score. This is the box base. So this is this part uh, on your short side. So the nine and a half inch side, we are going to score this at half an inch. And here, let me bring this down. So my numbers are up here etched into the board. So half an inch, two and three quarters, five and seven and a quarter. Then you're going to flip it to the short side, or excuse me, the long side, the 10 inch side, and you're gonna score it at 10, or excuse me, at two. This becomes the bottom of your box. So if you had a pattern that was directional, you want to make sure that the top or the, um, yeah, the top of your pattern is this way and this is the end. So if it was directional, you'd want to make sure that it's up and down this way uh, with the top of the, your design over here because you're going to score it two. Okay, so that is all the scoring for the box itself. The lid, super simple. Remember this is four and three eighths by four and three eighths. You're gonna score all four sides at one inch. So that is super duper simple. One inch, all four sides, okay? So you are all done with the scoreboard and that is an EK Tools scoreboard. I purchased that from Hobby Lobby forever ago. Um, they still sell them, and um, I used one that was like a combination paper trimmer and scoreboard from We Are Memory Keepers for a long, long time, but I really wanted something that was full and didn't have like hinges in it, because I felt like that gave me more accurate results, but that's just me. That's the one from Hobby Lobby, but there are tons on the market. They're all over the place. Uh, just look up scoreboard, 12 by 12 scoreboard, and you'll find them everywhere. All I'm doing now is burnishing. So I am finding these score lines, bending on them, 
and then I'm taking a bone folder. You can use your nail if you don't have a bone folder, and I'm just squishing those down, just making them more crisp. Oh, I lost my, I lost my score line. There it is. Crest is averted. <clears throat> and we're just gonna do this to all four of those score lines. Well, I guess there's five of them. We're gonna do that to all of them. We're gonna go ahead and do the lid. That's the same thing. All you're doing is folding back on the pattern and squishing it down. It's called burnishing. All right, now, we're doing, now we need to do some cutting. So on your lid, you've got these four corners. We're not gonna cut those corners off, but what we are gonna do is wedge into them. So on the left side of the score line, this is how I like to do it. On the left side of the score line, I'm just going to cut into that. And then I'm essentially going to cut a wedge into it and cut off that score line. That's all I'm doing. And I'm going to do that all the way around. I'm going to leave this straight because that seems to have a better finish. I'm going to turn it a quarter of a turn. Again, cut to the left side of that score line. Cut a little tiny wedge to cut and get rid of that score line. We're going to do that on all four sides. Quarter turn. Cut that score line out with a wedge quarter turn, cut to the left of the score line, cut a little tiny wedge, and your lid is all cut and done. Now let's do the base. The only thing that you need to do to get rid of is this little quarter inch rectangle right here. Again, I'm going to cut to the left of that score line, and I'm going to cut a little bit of an angle right here. So that just eliminates that score line and that score line right there. Okay, that's all you're gonna do for that. Now we need to do some cutting to release these little uh, squares down here. What I'm gonna do for that is I'm going to cut, again, we're just trying to get rid of that, that score line, but I'm gonna essentially make a little tiny triangle on each side of that score line, okay? So all I've done is essentially cut away at a tiny little, rec a tiny little triangle that score line. I've cut it away, okay? You're going to do that to all four of those little score lines. So I'm just going to start to the right of it and cut. I'm going to start to the left of it now and cut. I'm just going to pull that and get rid of it. Okay. Well, that one got a little drunken there. <laughs> Let's do this one. And all you're going to do, the only one that's a little bit different is this one. And all you're going to do is cut just a little tiny triangle out of that guy. Okay. I might need to cut just a tiny bit more out of that just so I can cut up a little higher. All right. That is your box base. All the cutting for that is done. So the next thing we need to do before we start putting stuff together is... There's a little acetate window in this box so you can see the pretzels, pretzel rods that you've done. We need to cut that out before we put the box together. So in order to do that, I went into my stash. Now, Angie is a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I am not. So I don't really have, I think I have one punch from Stampin' Up! So I'm not a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, so I used a nesting rectangle die set, I believe from Hero Arts. This die measures one and five eighths by two and seven eighths. So I'm going to cut that out of this box. So this is going to become your glue tab. When you glue it together to hide the seam, this now becomes the back of your box. All right. So this becomes the front of your box and that's where you want to cut your window out. So it is essentially the second rectangle from your glue tab. All right. And we're gonna just cut a window out of that. So I'm gonna place my die where I think it looks good. I don't want it too close to the bottom and I want it fairly centered side to side so that we don't have the, we don't run the risk of the uh, box being flimsy. Um, and I also don't want it up too high because when you get the lid and the ribbon on there, I don't want the window to interfere with that. So I feel like here-ish, it's pretty good and I'm gonna eyeball it and see if it's even side to side and straight across. That looks decent to me. All right, good enough for government work, right? All right, 
So when Angie did this, she had a smaller die cut machine. Um, I have the Spellbinders Platinum, which means I have the Big Mama plates. <laughs> so when she did hers, she had to fold the paper in a way that it actually indented on this panel right here. With the Spellbinders Platinum, I don't have to worry about that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this panel in. I'm going to bring it in here so you can actually see what the heck I'm talking about. All right, here she is, folks, in all of her big mama glory. Okay, so I, if you place it on there like that with this very outer edge folded, excuse me, sorry, how about I let you actually let you see it? With this very outer edge folded, you'll actually see it and it'll be just fine. So, and you won't have a crazy indentation like she did. Um, let's run this through. Super fast. And y'all, I have to make 13 of these. <laughs> That's how many ch teachers my kids have, which is bananas to me, but whatever. So I'm just showing you one. Keep this because I made it. I use this to make a tag so that my kids can write which teacher they're giving this to. Um, you don't have to do that. You can throw it away. You can use it for something different, but I decided I'd use it as a tag. So now you have your window. Now, as it stands right now, this is an open window. Um, you can leave it open if you so desire, but I decided I would be extra, I guess. <laughs> and I'm going to add just a little piece of acetate. So my acetate measures, let me check my notes. Um, my acetate measures one and three quarters by three and a quarter. I should have made it just a touch wider, but I was being, I don't know, cheap, I guess. Frugal with my acetate, you could say. Um, and that's just the size I made it. Now, if you make your window bigger, longer, smaller, just adapt it accordingly. Um, but try not to make it too big or too narrow so that like I said, your edges aren't flimsy. So all I'm doing right here is I am taking a piece of double-sided eighth inch score tape. And I'm going to put this all the way around my little square. Now I have, or my little rectangle. Now I have to get this pretty close to the edge just because, like I said, I was pretty, pretty cheap with my, uh, pretty frugal with my, um, acetate so it's it has to be close to the edge when I did the first box I used glue and I got glue absolutely everywhere so I decided for the sake of this video and so you don't have like conniptions and seizures when you see me put this acetate on here I decided I would just use eighth inch score tape but wet glue is an option just remember that it can get messy uh, if you do get your wet glue on your acetate use some rubbing alcohol it'll clean it right off that's what I had to do with a leather box so all I'm going to do is just set this, try not to bump the camera or get my head in the way. Just going to set that on there, squish it down. Now you have a covered window. So we're ready to put this box together now. So I am going to use wet glue now. Um, oops, there we go. Probably need to close that up just a touch. So on that half inch glue tab, I'm just going to fold on the second score line from the left, or excuse me, yeah, from the right. And then I'm going to score on the first line from the left, fold on the first line from the left. And that should just lay down right on top of each other. I'm going to use a paper towel just to catch any glue should it ooze a little bit. Okay. This is now, remember, the back of your box. And there's the front of your box with your window. Now, we cut those little wedges, which helps. But if you had um, a bottom of a box where it was completely square, you hadn't cut into it, this particular step becomes a little more important to give you a better finished look. So this is the back of the box, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to fold in the two sides, and I'm going to put a little... dollop of glue on all four of those. So we folded in the two sides 
Then we're going to fold in, this is the back, we're going to fold in the back, put another little bit of glue, then we're going to fold the front. Now you have the chance to kind of square up your box so it's not like whoppy jawed. You have the chance to square up your box and then I'm going to take my ruler and just kind of poke it in there. You can throw like a blue bottle or something in there to kind of help it stay down. But there is your box made. Okay, let's do the lid. The lid's really easy. Nothing hard about the lid. Just put some glue on these four little corner tabs that you've made. I have a tendency to do them all at once. But you absolutely don't have to. And remember, where I'm using wet glue, you can use dry glue. You can use that score tape. You can use a tape runner, whatever you choose. Um, whatever you have on hand. So all I'm doing, I'm going to take this and I'm going to tuck it under so that I can bring this scored edge to this loose edge. This is called a tight edge. This is called a loose edge. Okay. So where we have the score line, all I'm going to do is bring that around and I'm going to line them up. And I'm going to try to make sure that this is straight across and that you don't see stuff poking out. If you get this even and you do have something poking out, just snip it off. Give it a much nicer finished look. So again, we're bringing the score line to this loose edge. We're just going to fold it around. Hold it for just a second. If you were using dry glue, you wouldn't have to hold it, but... I like the wet glue because it gives me just a second to kind of maneuver things around. And there, folks, is your lid. Fits on like so. And it doesn't fall off. Yay, yes. Okay. Now, if you realize or if you noticed, there is a ribbon little hanger. Now, when I did this first box, I used my regular um, We Are Memory Keepers hole punch, okay? But that only goes in about an inch, a little bit shy of an inch. And so when I put the lid on this box and I pick it up by the handle, the, the paper, the handle kind of pulls the lid up a little bit, and I didn't like that. So... <laughs> In the effort of being extra, I pulled out my big mama <laughs> and I set it to about, I'm using the smaller punch, the eighth inch hole, and I set it to a, an inch and a quarter. And that should make it to where the ribbon does, and the ribbon and the lid do not interfere with one another. So this is the front, which means these two are your sides. And that's where you're going to put your holes. So you just slip this in. Try to get it somewhat centered. I don't know how much of this you're actually able to see. So we slid it in about an inch and a quarter. And I'm just going to try to get it centered from side to side as best I can. And punch. Bring around to the other side. Get it centered as best I can again. And punch. All right, so now we have our front with the acetate window. Here's our back, and we've got a little hole on our two sides. So I took some ribbon from my stash. I purchased this forever ago. I was making decorations for our Christmas tree. I had a black and or a black and white gingham, and like red and gold was our theme one year. And I made all the decorations for the tree. And so I purchased this forever ago. <laughs> So all you're going to do is starting from the outside of the box, you're just going to weed or thread this through and grab it. You're going to pull out a length of it and you're going to tie a knot. I tie it a couple times just so that I don't run the risk of it pulling through. Because believe it or not, my 11 and 13 year old are not like the gentlest of creatures. <laughs> If anybody else is, you know, teen and preteen that way, 
again, starting from the outside of the box, thread it through so you can get a little piece to grab. I don't know if you can see that little piece. I'm going to grab it. This is about a 16 inch piece of ribbon. You may not need something that long. You may want your handle longer or shorter, or you may not want a handle at all. That's totally cool. Totally up to you. Um, I just had this ribbon and this paper and spare acetate. And so I just went all out folks. All right. I am going to snip some of this extra off. I just feel like it makes it look a little nicer you can that doesn't bother you then don't worry about it all right so here is our little lid our little handle and there is our lid so see how that doesn't interfere anymore so this is the first one I did this is the second one notice how the lid doesn't interfere anymore I like that a lot better um, but that's just me. If that doesn't bother you, then use what hole punch you got. All right, so the last step, and then we are all done with this super cute little pretzel box, is I'm going to take the little cutout, the little die we had, and I'm going to take my little hole punch. Again, I'm using the little eighth inch, and I have this set to probably, I don't know, quarter of an inch in. And then I have some black and white baker's twine for my stash. This is about five and a half inches long. And I'm just going to thread that through. Grab the handle like this. And I'm just going to tie this in a little knot. And now there is a cute little coordinating tag to go with your little pretzel box. Your kids can sign the recipient's name on there so that they remember. <laughs> and there you go. It's all set to go. All right, y'all. I know this was a different video than what I normally make, but I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment. Please like, subscribe, and uh, go check out Angie at Stampin' with Amore. Again, that was the heavy inspiration for today's project. So hope you enjoyed, and we will catch you next time.